It's Halloween and I'm back. And yes, this is real. What could be a better gift for your friend or girlfriend or your grandma or yourself than Harvester T-shirt? Of course there aren't any. So click this link here and go shopping. There are three different colors and six sizes. And there are other fan products too. For example, Harvester mugs and phone cases. Stop, Arno. Wow, Sergeant at Arms, what brings you here? Didn't you forget something? What could have that been? Oh yes, the intro. Welcome to the Harvester Show, Initiate. Now let's get back to the agency directory. It's time to find out which girls and boys were from the pages of this. Stop, so, Arno. What now? Didn't you forget something? Again? Yes, something very important. Oh yes, of course, the interview. Just a moment before I uploaded this video on YouTube, I released an interview with Kevin Obregon on Harvester fan page on Facebook. Who's Kevin Obregon, you might ask? Well, Kevin was one of the main designers of Harvester. For example, this sign here is his creation, and so is the logo. You can see Kevin on the Making of Harvester video. There he is on the left, talking with his friend Gil Austin, the brainchild of the game. Here's a rare behind-the-scenes photo of Kevin testing the treadmill, which was used to shoot the actors walking. And Kevin also did the role of Sergeant at Arms. He did a damn good job. He sure did. In the credits Kevin is titled as an artist, but Actually, he participated in many different jobs, like directing and casting. As a side note, I want to mention that also some other people who were making the game did more than you would expect. For example, Dustin Nalf, who was the first Harvester-related person I managed to track down, was a programmer, but he also created all the hotspot descriptions. You know, when you click some object on the background, the game tells you something weird or funny about the object. I've always loved the hotspot descriptions, because they are one of the main things that create the strange atmosphere of the game. Who would have guessed that they were written by a guy who is credited as a programmer? Anyway, the interview is awesome. Kevin has so much fascinating stories about Harvester and the game industry in the early 90s. I highly recommend you to read the interview. Read it. That's an order. You heard the man. Now let's finally get back to this. The agency directory of Peggy Taylor Talent from 1994. In the previous episode of the Harvester show, we went through the women and men of the agency directory, and there's still girls and boys left. And the first familiar name here is... Regan Wallace. She did the role of Karin, the daughter of Edna. Other than the diner, she's all I have. You can find Karin from Edna's Diner, also known as DNA's Diner, and she means everything for her mother. Karin's story is not a very happy one, because she'll get buried alive by Mr. Potsdam. Or you can catch Mr. Potsdam in the action and save Karin. But because this is Harvester, saving Karin will lead to this. <laughs> Edna commits suicide and hangs her daughter too. While Karin is still alive, you can entertain yourself by showing different things to her. For example, a girly magazine, also known as Magazine Ole Ole, causes a realistic reaction. What's that, mommy? How dare you! You're a nice boy, Steve, but you need to be taught a lesson. What kind of pervert are you? Harassing a little girl like that? Although some people don't find this entertaining at all. There are people who think that violence can be entertaining, but harassing a little girl by showing her porn is just wrong. Oh no. Are you one of those people? 
was harassing a little girl too much for you? If it was... I apologize. I didn't mean to be offensive. I didn't want to make you feel bad. Hey, I know what makes you feel better. Violence! Oh my god! Help! No need to thank me. Regan Vallas also did the role of generic child in classroom number one, which means every girl in the classroom is her. Regan was seven years old when Harvester was shot in 1994. Since then she's acted in many movies and TV series. Maybe the most memorable role of hers is Jessica in Extreme Movie. Yep, she's a horny teenager who figures out that cell phones can vibrate. Who's the caller? Oh my God, so Are the buttons locked? Can she accidentally answer the phone? Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Honey, dinner's ready. Oh my God. So many questions. Honey, is your vagina ringing? Dad, that's ridiculous. Let's move on. The next one is... Oh, it's my phone. Pretty cool phone case, don't you think? You know where to get one. It's Regan Wallace. Regan is calling me. Why is she calling? She never calls me, she hates me. This must be an accident. Maybe she has just forgotten to lock the buttons and now she's... I don't wanna know. The next one is a boy and he is Christopher Ammons. He did the role of Jimmy James. Hey, how come you haven't been putting the paper out for me in the morning? Jimmy James is a paper boy, but a strange one because he doesn't bring you the paper. Instead you have to give him the paper every morning. Or else. <coughs> <coughs> Christopher didn't become an actor like Regan. He joined the Marines. I don't know if playing violent games can harm you, but acting in violent games can really mess your head up. You always were a kidder, Arno. I'll never get tired of hearing that. The next and the last one here is Ben Morgan. He was Hank, Steve's little brother. Good. Finally. Ben did also the role of generic child in classroom number two, which means every boy in the classroom is Ben, and also this kid here is Ben. If an A-bomb hits, what good is it gonna do to duck and cover? In the last episode of the Harvester show, I told you guys about the good and evil theme, which means many good people in the town have the evil version of them in the lodge. But not the kids. The only kids in the lodge are the three identical boys who are eating their mother. And I don't know who is the actor of those boys. He certainly is not Christopher Ammons. And I'm not sure if he's Ben Morgan either. So, that was it. Now we've been through the whole agency directory. Many actors like Kurt Kistler were not in this. But maybe I'll get back to them in the upcoming episodes. In the next episode, we'll go through the script. Was there something that was changed or cut off? Let's find out. Because it's Halloween, I have to tell you something about the soundtrack of Harvester. The soundtrack is amazing, but the composer is not mentioned in the credits. According to the intro, the music is made by Chork Productions, but that doesn't exist. Thanks to Kevin Obregon, I found out that the name of the mysterious composer is Hamilton Altstadt, and of course I had to track him down. Hamilton told me that he still listens to soundtrack of Harvester after all these years, and he does that on every Halloween. I think that's a great idea. So, happy Halloween, buckaroos! And at this point of the video, there's only one thing left to say. Bye now!